Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Let's give the Lord a hand because he's been so good to us. He's our savior. He's our hope. I, I'm so glad to see you here on the first day of the first, well, actually, first Sunday of the year. It's Sunday the 7th, and we're starting off saying this. God is important to me, and this is how you're showing it. You're taking action. You're here in his presence, and you're saying, God, I just want to let you know this year is going to be different. This year is going to be better than last year. This year, this year I'm going to make higher commitments than I've ever made. I'm going to see greater results than I've ever seen. I'm so proud of every one of you are online in here. And, and this is going to be a year. It's going, to, it's going to have challenges. It's going to have difficulties. It's going to have trials. It's going to have ups and downs. It's life. It's life. But at the end, this is what we're going to be able to say. It was a good year. It was a year of a harvest. I've seen results. I'm not the same person I was at the beginning of that year. I've grown. I know God better, man. This is good. And that's going to be a choice that we're making today. And, and how we start off is important. How we continue is really important. And how we finish is important. Let's not just start off this year great. Let's have a consistent year. And let's make 2024 the greatest year of our lives for his kingdom. To see souls get saved, lives transformed, and, and to see victories in, in the battles that we're facing. And we're going to make up our minds that that's the truth. God wants that for you. And you got to say, okay, let's do this, okay? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time. I thank for everyone that's here. And you love everyone so much. There's not a person here that you don't absolutely love. This song was saying you've been so, so good. And you've been a great friend. And some of us know you as a friend. Some of us don't quite yet. But I thank you, Lord, that by the time, you know, this year is done, there's one thing we'll be able to be brag about is this. I know God better. I know him better than I did, and he's just a good God. And I went in knowing about him, but now I know him personally. He's my friend. He's my Lord. He's, he's the one that helped me through those trials and tribulations. It wasn't easy, but the Lord was with me. So I ask you, Lord, speak to us today as we study your word, and we dedicate this day, and we dedicate this year to you for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to be talking about a real simple subject, and, that, and this is a statement that we're going to open up with, and this is a statement. I am fully committed to the Lord. Say it with me. I am fully committed to the Lord. One more time. I am. Now, everybody, I am fully committed to the Lord. Now, you might not feel that right now, that you're fully committed, but that statement is setting you up to be, to be fully committed to the Lord. You're headed in the right direction. In 1 Kings 8.61, it says, it says this, And may your hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God. God is making it clear, I want you to be fully committed. I want you to give your whole heart to me. Now, God is not asking for you to give him something he's not already given you. We already know how committed Jesus is for us. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners... He came and suffered and died for every one of our sins so we can be forgiven and have a reconciled relationship with him. God is fully committed to you. So the problem isn't with God, God loving us or being committed to us. The problem in life is that we're so committed to so many things that sometimes we don't have time to be fully committed to the Lord. But he's saying, let's do this early in the year. May your hearts be fully committed. Now, the word hearts means your mind your thoughts, your will, your inner man, your soul, your resolutions, your determination, your moral character, your emotions. May you be totally committed in your thoughts, in your decisions to the Lord. Be fully committed. There, I, when you're fully committed to something, you think about it a lot. I, I remember when me and Lisa were, were going out as boyfriend and girlfriend, uh, I, I carried a, a little picture of her. And I just had it in my wallet, and, and, and then I'd bring it out. And it, if I met some friends, I'd say, oh, this is my girlfriend. <laughs> Isn't she pretty? And they say, yeah, okay, she's pretty. I go, yeah, she is. <laughs> right? And, and, and then, and then I, I couldn't wait for after work so I could just call her because I, wasn't, because I get distracted at work. So I got I to gotta work. And, so I, I, I couldn't call her while I was at work, but as soon as work was over, I'm in my car, ta -ta 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 -ta, got her digits, calling. 
She was on my mind all day long because what you're fully committed to and you love, you can't just stop thinking about it. Well, that's the way God thinks about you. He's fully committed to you, and he can't stop thinking about you. And he's saying, man, if you'll just get committed to me, you'll, be, you'll start seeing a life you could ever ima- you'd never imagine. I remember we'd get on the phone, and, 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 and after we ran out of things to say, we'd just hear each other breathe. <laughs> you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Now, you know, what, what the idea is, you know, you said that's puppy love, and, but this is the idea. That was before we got married, and, and now we're married, and we're they're 30 years into this, and, I, and I'm still in love with her. I still think about her because I'll tell you this, what you love and you're committed to, you think about. You think about. You know, Lisa does have me wrapped around her finger, right? I try to say no to her, and it's just like, oh, okay. I mean, I don't like going to the store with her. She started asking for herself, like, you don't need that. Okay. She, that's all Lisa does. She goes, okay. I go, do you really want it? <laughs> but, but, but I understand, we understand relationships with people, but sometimes we don't understand relationships with God. That it could be even richer than that. That you could have a God that loves you, that's committed to you, that will be with you, that will talk to you, that will guide you, that will give you his joy, will give you his peace, share everything he has with you. And if you don't know him like that yet, make this the year that you know God. Give your heart totally to the Lord. And it starts with a commitment. Say it with me, commitment. The word commitment mean, or being committed means a firm decision. Uh, I, you get com- you committed to something when you make a firm decision. I mean, when you make the decision to be committed, you're not wavering. Uh, I, I think what happens, sometimes we date the Lord, but we're not married to the Lord. There's a difference between dating because you can break up anytime you want. But stop expecting for great results to happen in areas you're not committed. God's already committed, but he's waiting for us to come in. But look, so it means a firm decision. That means it doesn't waver. A promise. A pledge to be fully devoted to God and to do what he says. So it's a, when I'm saying I'm committed, this is what I'm saying. I'm fully devoted to you. And how do I show that? I'll do everything you tell me to do. That's devotion, right? That's commitment. It means being wholehearted. It means being peaceful. Now that's interesting that the word peaceful came Um, And it means committed, but being peaceful. And this is what it means. The more I'm committed to knowing God and doing his will, the more peaceful and joyful I will be. We've been committed to a lot of things in life that promise peace, promise joy, promise satisfaction. And we were 100% committed, but it left us empty. And it left us down. And it left us addicted. And it left, left, and it, it left us uh, abused. People that we thought would never back, backstab us, they backstabbed us. They say, man, what happened? We were committed to lifestyles. And we found that I was committed. I was down. Some of you guys were gangbangers. I was down from my hood until you went to prison. Everybody forgot about you. They were... They were people you're committed to as long as you had money they were your friends but when you went through a tough time you had no more money where your friends at you were committed you were committed you you were all in and but you found disappointment and God is saying that's not what you're going to find with me if you finally would get committed to me if, if not just committed but be fully committed to me this is what's going to end this is how it's going to end up you're going to have peace in your mind peace in your heart you're going to finally find joy and a sense of self-worth and satisfaction and you can't find it until you fully commit to the lord that's crazy some of us were more committed to to casinos than we are to the lord you used to go every Sunday to the casino. But every Sunday for God, I don't want to be radical. But you've been radical to your sin. You've been radical to pain. You've been radical to cycles of destruction. And God is saying, you were created to be radical. You were created to be fully committed. You should have been fully committed to the wrong stuff and the wrong people. I'm telling you right now, let's make 2024 the greatest harvest year of your life, the greatest results of your life. Come on. I'm not just saying this. If we want to get the results, first comes commitment, then comes success. Right? You guys understand that, right? So committed. Now, the antonym of, of commit, being committed is this, being indifferent. Like, I don't care. You don't, you don't want to be indifferent about what matters. Or it means also this unfaithful, disloyal, uninvolved, unmoved. 
passionless, half-hearted, unresponsive, or apathetic. Apathetic means showing no enthusiasm and no interest. We got we to, gotta like, we, this is what we got to do. We got to participate. And that's why we're a church that's sometimes loud because we're participating. And you're loud at the baseball game. You're loud at the football game. Come on, you're loud arguing with each other. Why all of a sudden when it comes to God, we're apathetic and we have no fire. We have no desire. We're embarrassed. And I've learned this. If you don't start getting, come on, passionate about your life. And you start, you start getting committed about your own life. Nothing's going to change. There has to be a time in your life that I'm not going through this year joking. This is going to be a year that I'm passionately committed. I'm fully committed to the Lord. And I'm making up my decision right now. And I'm not wavering. Right? Did God call you to this church? We well, got to know that. And if he has, that's it. We're familia. Now, you got some crazy families up in here. You're part of it. Right? It's, it's just like, like, you could, like, like, you could talk about my, I could talk about my brother, but don't you talk about my brother. Right? This idea, don't you mess with my family, because that's my family. We're in this till death do us part. Come on, is there anybody that committed that saying, God, I'm not just, I'm not just dating you. I am committed to you until death and forever. And then you'll get some results. That's all of your heart, your thoughts, your emotions, your decision, your moral character, all of it. Massive vision, if you have a big vision of a brighter future, takes massive commitment, massive passion, and massive action for it to come to pass. Be careful that your dreams are bigger than your commitments. That you have this big dream and little commitment. If you have a big dream and little commitment, understand the big dreams are just going to end up in disappointment. It's not going to happen. And what God is asking for right now, he goes, you've been committed, because, but he goes, I need all of it. But what I'm ready to do, I need a full commitment. I'm fully committed to you. But if you'll fully 100% commit, I guarantee you it'll be worthwhile for you. So three, three truths about being committed to the Lord. Truth number one, after we commit our lives to the Lord, he will act on our behalf. God is fully committed to act on our behalf. But he's waiting for our commitment. God will not, get, check this out. God will not touch any area that we have not committed to him or are committed to. That means I won't even touch it unless you're committed. When you're committed, I'll touch it. I want to touch it. But unless you give me your life, I can't touch your life. If you don't give me your kids, I can't touch your kids. If you don't give me your marriage, I can't touch your marriage. If you don't give me your business, I can't touch your business. If you don't give me your decisions, I can't direct you. I'll touch what you commit to me. Look what the scripture says. Psalms 37, 5 says, commit your way to the Lord. All even says, commit your life to the Lord. Commit your goals to the Lord. Commit your year to the Lord. Commit your decisions to the Lord. Commit your relationships to the Lord. Commit your marriage to the Lord. Commit your family to the Lord. Commit your children to the Lord. Commit your business to the Lord. Commit your problems to the Lord. Commit your day to the Lord. Commit your month to the Lord. Trust in him. And he will act. Now, this is not maybe I'll act. He goes, when you would, if you commit your life to me, I guarantee you this, I'll do my part. Because I don't lie. I will act on your behalf. Now, that word act is interesting. This is what it says. It means, it's a Hebrew word, asa. And it means, I will help you bring it to pass. You're going to get a vision. And you've tried everything. You've tried to do without me. But if you just let me in. And commit that thing. Commit yourself to me. What you couldn't get done in your whole life, if you'll just commit it to me, I will help you bring it to pass. I will act on your behalf. It also means to deal with it, I'll deal with it. I'll make it happen. I'll help you acquire it. I will do it. I will produce it. How many know that's a good thing? God, God said, all I need is a commitment. And I, I, I've shared some, some of the story of my daughter. You know, Abriana, uh, she, was, I think she was actually three. Lisa's always correcting me. Uh, she was three. Is that right, Lisa? Oh, praise the Lord. Got it right. She was three, and, and we went on vacation when she was three years old, and we were going to go for the first time to St. Croix, Virgin Islands. That's where I grew up. And then we're going to stop back at, after we went to the Virgin Islands. 
we were going to go to um, Florida, visit my mother, and then come home. It was like a two-week vacation. As we were take, getting ready in the airport, you know, um, uh, uh, Brianna was always, um, always full of energy, excited, talkative. But that week when we were taking off on that plane, we were in the airport, she had a little pink suitcase and she, would, she was pulling it, and, but she had no energy. And usually yeah, she has massive energy. And, and she was pulling it and she ran out of energy and then she just stopped in the middle of the airport, just dropped to the floor and just stood there. And then she asked me to pick her up and I'd pick her up. And I, I thought she was just being lazy. She was being a baby. But I didn't know she was really sick. So she got fever on the plane, and I'm concerned with her because she's not laughing, she's not playing, and, and so I'm really con I'm concerned about her. But, but I, told, I told Lisa, I go, my, my, un my, my, my uncle's a doctor, so what we'll do, as soon as we get off the plane, we'll go visit my uncle for him to check her out because I know she has a fever. So he checked her out, and he didn't do any like, real deep check out, but he goes, yeah, she does have a fever. He gave us something for the fever. So we went on that week and she just kept getting weaker and weaker and weaker. By the time we went to Florida, it was her birthday and it, and it was her birthday. And she, all the family from Florida, because that's where most of our, our blood, my mom's blood family lives. And they all came over to celebrate her birthday. And when they celebrated her birthday, she, she was underneath the table, under the table, just sitting there and just say nothing. And I'm telling her, Brianna, they're celebrating your birthday. You should be happy. And she had no energy to smile, no energy to be happy. And she was starting to get really moody. So we, got, we finally got on the plane. The two weeks are over. We get on the plane and we come back to California. And I go, I don't know. And then we found, we found two bumps underneath her arm. And I go, Lisa, let's go ahead and, and take her to the hospital. So we went, we went to Loma Linda Hospital. And I go, let's just get her checked out. And, and that night was a long night. We were at the hospital all night long, and late at night, they came back. Actually, it was the next day. We were there all day, and next day, they come and they, they bring me and Lisa into the room, and they said, um, we regret to inform you, your daughter has cancer. She has leukemia. Well, it caught us totally by surprise. We were not expecting that. Lisa just starts crying, and, and all I could do is this, because I've heard messages like this, you know, my whole life, and and all I could do now is just commit my daughter to the Lord. I said, God, I can't, I'm not a doctor. I'm overwhelmed by this. But I do know this. I could commit my daughter to the Lord. And if I commit her to you, Lord, then you can act. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to sit here and cry about it right now because I need an intervention from God. And some of us right now, you've been worrying. You've been full of fear. You've been full of anxiety. And you're hoping that 2024 turns out to be a great year. And understand, hope is not the strategy. You you need to be committed, fully committed to the Lord. And if you get fully committed to the Lord in any area that you're struggling in, God is saying, commit and I will act. So, so, so how am I going to get, how am I going to commit to the Lord? Well, all I knew to do is pray. So I went up to little Abriana. She's three, totally no energy. Now we find out she's dying. The doctors are saying that we're going to do our best, well, but there's no, no guarantees. So I, I went into that room with her, and I, I go, Abriana, I'm going to pray right now. And when we pray, this is what I told her, God's going to help us. And she looked at, and I go, baby, okay, so what's going to happen when we pray? Now, I said she had no energy, but she did her best. She goes, God's going to help us. I go, okay, baby, we're going to pray right now. And then God's going to act. And I'm going to tell you right now, whatever you're going through, come on, you got to give your life 2024 20, to you, Lord. Come on, let's get fully committed. And, and I fully gave it to the Lord. And, I, and this is what happened. 30 days later, they couldn't find any cancer in her. And now she's a, come on, she's a pastor. A pastor in a church in L.A. We're the husband. And we got, come on, two grandchildren. What, see, because what we did, we gave it to the Lord. And when we gave it to the Lord, the Lord began to act. It's not too late for you to give give your life to the Lord, to give your kids to the Lord, to give your body to the Lord, to give your marriage to the Lord. I know it looks like it's all over and it looks like it's, you have a death sentence over yourself, but there's a God that could come through and act on your behalf if you'll just commit it to the Lord. It's not too late. Truth number one is after we commit, 
the Lord acts. What does he do? Wow. God is totally committed to helping us, forgiving us, setting us free, restoring us, healing us, and prospering us. He's just waiting for our passionate and sold out commitment to him. Stop trying to get supernatural favor from God, results, breakthroughs, and miracles in areas that you've not fully committed to the Lord yet. And I want you to feel this. Am I fully committed? Am I interested? That's one thing. No, but are you fully committed? And if you're fully, and, and, and full, full commitment is just a decision. I make a decision. God will do the rest. You just, need, you just need to, me and you just need to make a commitment. Truth number two. Everything we commit to the Lord will succeed. Say it with me. Everything that we commit to the Lord will succeed. Now that's, that's a promise. That's a promise and a half. I, I love reading the word because I base my life on the promises of God. This is the fine print that gets you results. It's important that you stop being a victim. And I said, when I say victim, I'm, I'm not saying that you weren't victimized. I'm not saying that you weren't abused. I'm not saying that you weren't hurt. But you got to make up your mind. I'm not going to stay stuck in victimization. I serve a God that if I could commit, come on, if I could just give it to the Lord, come on, give my past to the Lord, give the abuse to the Lord, give the divorce to the Lord, give all my pain to the Lord. This is what he promised. He will help me succeed. Look at this in Proverbs 16, 3. Look. Commit your work to the Lord. Commit your actions to the Lord. Commit your life to the Lord and your plans will succeed. He goes, if you just commit your work, your life to me, you will, not might, hopefully, you will succeed. The word succeed means you'll accomplish it. You'll have provision for it. You'll be prepared for it. You'll be directed by God in it. You'll be restored. You'll be confirmed. This is what God is saying. We will never have real success in any area that we've not fully committed to the Lord. I remember when we got, I mean, the acquisition of this building. It was, it was crazy. I was in a staff meeting with, with my, our staff at the Sierra Way campus. We outgrew that. We had a tent in the, in, in, in outside. It, 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 when it would rain, we had electrical cords in there. I used to just pray that when you go in there, you better be saved because you don't know if you're going to make it out of there. <laughs> the fire department would come and just ignore it. I don't even know. It was just crazy. But that's the only place. That, that was the overflow. My son-in-law got saved in the overflow. But I already knew that we can't continue to have all these electrical outlets or water going in there and be like, Hallelujah. <laughs> But that's all we had. But I remember, I remember, uh, I remember a staff meeting where God told me there's a building on the north side of the city. Go right now, go look for it. And I'm not saying I hear from God like that all the time, but he, told, he spoke to me. So in the middle of staff meeting, I told Robert, my brother, I go, bro, let's go. There's a building on the north side of the city. It's there. It's our building. We need a building. So we drove. It took us. We drove per, with no GPS. But the Holy Spirit was GPS in us. And we got here. We drove from there to this campus. Five minutes, we were here looking at the building I've never seen in 15 years in the city. I looked at the building, and, I, and Robert looking at me. We're looking through the fence on this side. And I looked at it. I go, Robert, this is the Way World Outreach Headquarters. Now, I said, well, why would you say that? Because I've committed this ministry to the Lord. I committed my work to the Lord. I committed my dreams to the Lord. I committed my vision to the Lord. And if I'm committed, come on, if I've committed my vision, I've committed my dreams, I've committed my life to the Lord, this is what I do know. It will succeed. Amen. Now understand, this building has no phone number on it. It's not for sale. We know nothing about it. It looks like an abandoned building. So... My, one of my friends I was in a car business with, I told him, I, I go, um, here's the address. Could you find out who owns the building? Well, it was a few days later. He found out who owns the building. He goes, I found out it's a, it's a Jewish man in Hollywood, and his office is in Sunset Boulevard. 
He goes, and, and I go, okay, can you do this? Set up a meeting with him. Now understand this. I'm setting up a meeting on a 120,000 square foot building with no money. No credit. We never bought nothing on credit. So literally, we're first time buyers looking at a 120,000 square foot building. So I go, let's set up the meeting anyways. And I'll, and I'll, so I commit to the Lord. Now, the great thing about succeed is he will give you provision. He will give you direction. He will give you favor if you just committed to the Lord. There's some things that you haven't succeeded in yet. And I'll tell you why. Because if you succeeded in it without the Lord, you would be bragging about it. And you would think you don't need God. And God is saying, you've tried and you have intel you're, you're intelligent. You, I mean, there's no reason you shouldn't do it. But God says, what I'm ready to do for you is bigger than what you can do. Do, and by the time I do it, you're going to give me glory because you tried everything that you could in 2021, in 2022, in 2023, and it looks like nothing has changed. But God is saying, this is your time for change, and I'm going to tell you how to do it. Commit yourself fully to the Lord, and you will succeed. So I remember having this meeting, and we set up the meeting. We go, we, three of our staff members go, we go to LA, Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, walk up there, and he goes, yeah, how can I help you? I go, well, we're interested in your building. Uh, we're doing a lot of work in the, in the city, and we're believing that building is ours. <laughs> With no money, we have no money. <laughs> he goes, really? He goes, okay, well, let's just cut to the chase. What do you, what's your offer? And I made him an offer, he got so mad. He kicked us out of the office, and these were his last words. I'd rather die than give you the building for that price. So, uh, uh, uh. But you got to be careful what you say. Because, see, some of you guys get defeated by a no, and behind your no is your victory. Behind your no. Come on. It doesn't matter what the devil's saying. You better learn that you got, you better know that you got a word from God. And it doesn't matter if people are supporting you. It doesn't matter if you have the money. It don't matter. I heard from God. And understand this. I've committed my life to the Lord, and I've committed my business to the Lord. I've committed everything to the Lord. So he will help me succeed. He has no lack. God don't have it like I did. That's why I need him. So he kicked us out. So when, as I walk out, I just say this. Pharaoh, let our building go. I, go, I told my staff, we're going to come back. God's going to give us this building. We'll succeed in this endeavor because this was not an idea from man. This was an idea from God. And all we want to do is help some people. And here we are in 2024 and there's not one more room. Come on. This place is packed out. There's not a seat available because God has said it. We believed it. And it's happening. Right? So now, I went back three months later. I bought him a little present too. I bought him one, I went to a Christian bookstore and I bought him an eagle with a scripture on it. And it was so nice. And this was, I, I already knew, like God was telling me to buy him some. I left it there. And this was, the, this was a problem for him because he'd have that eagle on his desk. And every time he looked at that eagle, he'd be thinking about us. I know we're crazy, but he would be thinking about us. So he goes, okay, so when we get back with the eagle, I go, he goes, what do you want? What's your offer now? And I gave him the basically same offer. I go, that's what we can afford. He goes, that's the same offer. I know. But we'll pay, we'll pay it? He goes, no, get out of here. I go, okay. Six months later, God says, go back. Six months later, we went back. The Lord's with us. You know, some of your breakthroughs haven't happened yet because God's trying to build your own endurance. How, how, can you, how can you operate at the next level if you don't have the endurance to even get there? Some things don't happen as fast as you want it because, you, because if it happened as fast as you want it, even if you got there, you couldn't stay there because you've not developed endurance in your character to hold on to a blessing. So six months later, almost a year later, we're going back with the same dream. Come on. We're still speaking it. We're still talking it. And we still gave it to the Lord. He's going to help us succeed. So we went back. And we went back this time. 
He goes, what's your offer? I goes, I gave him the offer. Same thing. I ain't changed nothing. He goes, okay. I go, what? He goes, okay. Let's do it. He goes, you got to give me 60 grand. I go, you got it. I, I had to go find the 60 grand after I told him you got it. But so we committed to 60 grand. And this is what we committed to, to a lease on the property because we couldn't buy it. But we could lease it. We'll start where we're at on, on a really good lease that, that God gave us. I go, we'll do that. Um, and and I, go, but I go, one more thing, though. We need, one, we need two more things from you. He goes, what? He goes, um, I want a year free rent. <laughs> okay, so you're going to lease the building from me, and you don't want to pay lease. I go, yeah, 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 because we're going to fix the building up for you, and we're going to invest in your building, and I want a year to invest in your building. And you know what he said? Yes. Oh I go, oh, well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But you know who's turning those no's into yeses? Who's, come on, who's supplying every single need? I'm in partnership with the one that created the heavens and the earth. I'm in partnership with the one that raises the dead. I'm in partnership with the one that when he gives you a word, he brings it to pass. Give God some praise. God is saying, fully commit to me. I'll help you. So, so, I got to need one more thing, though, one more thing. I go, we're leasing it, but we want to buy it. So I need a number. So when we're ready to buy it, I need to know what you'll sell it to us for. And he told us, I'll sell it to you for market value. I go, that's not a number. I need a real number. Market value. I'm going to go tell the church, hey, we got a deal. Market value. I go, no, I think the building's worth $4 million. I remember, we don't have no money. I'm just talking big right now. He goes, he goes, no way. The bill is worth eight million. I go, okay, deal. It don't matter. We don't have four million. We don't have eight million, but at least we got a number. He accepted it. What was crazy is he accepted it. He didn't check our bank accounts that we had no money. He didn't check our credit because we had none. We got into this building with less, less credit checks than you, we have no credit checks, than going to Zales and trying to get a ring. Some of you guys got turned down for Zales if you had our credit because we had nothing, you wouldn't even get the ring. But we got 120,000 square foot building and we signed an $8 million contract because the Lord helped us succeed. Come on, this is how God works. But it didn't end there. He told us, look, if you, this is what I, you have three and a half years to pay the lease. I won't let you buy it until you pay your lease for three and a half years. After that, you can exercise your option to buy. If you exercise your option to buy and you don't execute, that means you fall out of escrow, um, you don't have the money down, um, uh, something happens that you can't close when you say you're going to close, you, you, your option to buy is eliminated. You're done. So when you say you're going to buy it, you better be ready to buy it. Well, okay, I go... We'll be ready. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, this, so we did. We signed a contract, okay, exercise by. But this is what happened. Three and a half years later come up, and the man now realizes the building is worth $12 million. So you realize I left $4 million on the, on the table. So now what he does, he makes up a whole bunch of fees, fake fees, and he tells us that we, order, we owe him $250,000 and he gave us an eviction notice. And he was, all this stuff you guys don't know about, this is a spiritual warfare behind the scenes. And I come up here, hallelujah, praise God. <laughs> you understand? I mean, there's some warfare. If you want to accomplish great things in your life, you got to be able to handle some warfare when you're all by yourself. Not everybody's going to come rescue you. You got to know, I got God with me and I got a promise and I've given my life to him. I've given my transaction to him. I've given my business to him. I've given my marriage to him. I've given my kids to him and I'm expecting him to act and help me succeed. So he called Janet to, Janet drives all the way down to to Sunset, Hollywood, and he says, sign right here, and, and, and so I won't evict you. All you have to do is just admit that you owe me the money. You can give it to me wherever you want. We already knew he was trying to trick us into saying that we defaulted on our loan, which we didn't. 
So I, I talked to my lawyer. I go, look at everything. Do we miss anything? He goes, no, we didn't, we didn't miss anything. Go, okay, we ain't paying nothing. I go, we're going, we, I guess we're going to have to go to war here. But I, I'll tell you this, the, the battle's not mine. It's God's. When you start giving it to God, God says, excuse me, I'll handle this. You know what happened? What happened two days later after he tried to steal our property? I seen him on Channel 7 News as a, as a slumlord. They took all his properties away from him, including this one. And they put it under conservatorship of some lawyers. So now he don't have acts. He can't say what he wants to do with his properties. His properties are no longer managed by him. They're managed by some lawyers. So when we found that out, we, I, I, we, call, we, call, we call their lawyers and said, look, can you look at our, 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 our contract? He goes, yeah. Okay, we want to exercise our option to buy. He goes, oh, okay. He, had, he couldn't say nothing about it. This is now we have to get the finance and to get an eight million dollar property, and we've never financed anything. We went to a Christian credit union; they turned us down. We went to another Christian credit union; they turned us down. And 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 you would think they they would have saw the faith that I had. And I remember, I remember that Christian credit union. I told them this is what I told them. I go, you messed up. I go, you messed up because we're, we're going to grow and we're going to change the world and you could have been part of it and you're going to have no part in this. You messed up. This, you guys are scared and you should have stepped out in faith because that's what your job is. I told him just like that. Acting like we had finance. We didn't have nothing. But I do have this. I got a partner. And I've given it to the Lord. And I've committed it to the Lord. And I've committed it to the Lord. It will succeed. We ended up, a secular bank looked at our books and they said, man, you guys, are, you guys are a great church. You have hardly any bills. You guys are doing great. He goes, we'll finance you. Right? I mean, finance a perfect time. They gave us this, this come on, $8 million loan. Of course, we had to put down payment. But $8 million loan with no credit and they gave us 3% commercial loan. Lowest of anybody I've ever heard of, and we're still under 3% right now. I'm telling you, when God negotiates your deal, when God gets involved in your mess, when God gets involved in your impossibility, he's going to be your negotiator, he's going to be your healer, he's going to be your savior, he's going to be your victory, and you're not going to be able to say, I was just a good, no, good negotiator. You're going to be able to say, man, I didn't have nothing going for me, but I had God going for me, and because I had God, it all worked out and it ended up in success. So I remember finally we signed escrow. I signed the boom, 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 the way we're allowed bam. And we celebrated. We got the building. The day after I saw the man on the news again. And this is what happened. They gave him all his properties back. All the properties back, minus Hallmark. Come on. God is saying, he said, he would die. I'll just move him out of the way. Don't you worry about it. There's some miracles. Come on. That God's going to bring you. That you're going to say, I don't know how this turned out. It must have been God. And I'll end it with this last truth. Truth number three, all that remain fully committed to God will see the results or see the harvest. Don't understand this. If you start off the year committed and you don't follow through, you have given up on your vision. And worse than that, you've given up on God. It's over. Well, you promise. I go, yeah, yeah, I promise if you remain committed. I'm committed, but you broke the commitment. You'll see the results if you remain committed. There's some commitments that God is asking for us. And the proof that God wants to do something greater in your life than he's ever done, he's asking for more commitment from you than he's ever asked from you. Stop trying to get next level results with your present level commitments. Next level results come with next level commitments. You're going to have this idea. If you're just coming on Sundays once, once or twice a month, you're going to have to come every Sunday. 
You're going to sign up for Holy Warriors. Come on, that's a commitment. Sign up for Holy Warriors on TV. Well, do I really have to do that? Well, what, do you really want a breakthrough? Do you really want change? Do you really want a harvest? Do, come on, stop trying to expect. Stop expecting full results with partial commitments. If you could be talked out of it, this is the truth. You're not ready for it. That's just the way it is. I wasn't going to get talked out of that, this building. I had no other options. This is it. Praise the Lord. And we're here again. Come on. And we're purchasing other buildings. Come on. We're, come on. We're, we're right now. There's somebody right now in Africa. They're building a church right now for us. I found out this morning. And they're saying, we want to give it to the Wayworld Outreach. I'm looking at the construction. They're building a church for us. God is saying, there's no limits. Come on. I need someone to fully be committed to me. The only limit is your commitment. Look what it says. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing. If we don't, give up. The harvest, the breakthrough, the success, the fulfillment of vision, the salvation of our loved ones, the personal transformation, the restoration of our lives and minds and health and relationships. Come to those that stay committed to the Lord and don't give up. This is our time. There's seven commitments that we're making as a church and and. The idea, do all seven of them. Number one, give your hearts totally to the Lord. This is the time. In Joshua in Joel 2, 12, it says, turn to me now while there is time. Give your hearts. Come with fast and weep in the morning. Now is the time. Don't wait for tomorrow. Now is the time to be committed. Now is the time to get in a position where God can act on your behalf. But God will not act on your behalf if you're not committed, if you've not committed it to him, if you're not fully committed. God does not act on, the, on, on, on people that are apathetic. If you're apathetic and whatever will be, will be. You know what you're going to get? Nothing. If you're always talking about quitting when it gets hard, and you could, I mean, I, I, it's okay once in a while I mention it, man, but I ain't quitting. I mean, we've all felt like quitting. But if you start giving it life and you start harboring there and you start planning to quit, God, you don't understand, you, you, you're giving up. You're not going to see a harvest. You got to stick it out. Even when, so if you're going to get tired, get tired of doing bad. But don't get tired of doing good. Come on, get tired of the addiction, get tired of the anger, get tired of the procrastination, get tired of quitting, get tired, come on, get tired of losing. But don't get tired of doing what's right. Don't get tired of praying. Don't get tired of studying the word. Don't get tired of coming to church. Don't get tired of doing bad. Don't get tired of doing good. So number two, sign up, acquire your daily growth book and study daily. Don't expect an investment and a return on a place you're not invested. Me and Lisa wake up every morning at 7 o'clock together and we have a Bible study every morning, 7 o'clock, whether we feel like it or not, and we have a Bible study and we go through our growth book. It makes, it makes our marriage healthier. We start off, we're way more productive in that day because we're giving our lives totally to the Lord that day. Don't be too busy to give your life to the Lord. And giving your life to the Lord is giving some time to the Lord. Study his word. Number three, sign up for your next step of growth journey. This is a commitment. Either you're going to do it or not. If you don't sign up, it's, un, it's, it's no action. You're unmoved. But if you know that your next step, I've mean, got to take the next step. You're not going to grow without next level commitment. That's going to be Tuesday. Holy Wars 1, 2, and 3. Right? Number four, attend all impartation services. During 24th and 28th, uh, um, is Daniel Kalinda is going to be here. He, they're the greatest harvesters in the world. No one has reached more souls than Daniel Kalinda and, 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 uh, and Ryan Howard Barnkin's ministry. Millions of people, when they went to Africa, 5% of Africa were, were Christians. Now, after they went, 95% of Africa are Christians. Because, and he's going to be here in pardon. And God is saying, this is going to be your year of harvest. Get in position to receive from these men of God that have done it. They're not, they're not talking about doing it. They've done it. They're going to be here. It's a miracle that we even could get them here. They're speaking to millions of people. It's amazing. But he's coming because this is, he's coming to us, for us, so we can receive what God has for us. Give a first fruit offering on January 21st. Number six, set, set seven top goals for the year. Write them down. Write down. Spend some time thinking about your future. God, what do you want? What do you desire? What do you want to see happen? Write it down. 
Number seven, participate in 21 day fast. If you've not started a fast with us, this is the time to start it. Uh, and, and there's th three types of fast, a liquid fast where you just stop, you just drink um, water, juices and broth. And you might do that for three days and, or you could go, and then next one is Daniel fast. No meat, no sweets, drink only water and juices. Eat only fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts and seeds. Someone said, I don't like that one either. <laughs> okay, this is maybe for you. But you gotta have fast. I mean, you can't say, I want the fast I could just eat. No, there's no such thing. <laughs> What's fasting is, is you're abstaining from food for a spiritual purpose. And what you're saying, God, I want you and I need you more than anything. I need you more than food. And what you're saying is, I'm focused on you right now. And, I'm, and when you start fasting, it not only gets God's attention, it gets demons' attention. The Bible says some demons only leave when someone's serious enough, serious enough to say no to their flesh. To say, I'm going to fast and pray. And demons start shaking. They say, oh no, someone's fully committed to the Lord. And it takes their authority away. There's some demonic oppression that you've been dealing with. And God is saying, by the time you're done with this fast, you're going to conquer things that have been in your family and been in your life for years. The depression's going to go. Come on. The addiction's going to go. The cycles of destruction are going to go because you're going to fast. <laughs> Intermittent. That's what you fast until 5 p.m. And, and then you have a light meal or whatever time you decide on. As long as you, it is stretch and you're not practicing, you know, I mean, and you're practicing food and self-denial. Now, understand, you could go till 5, 6, 9, 5, or whatever time you want. But the idea is to stretch for you. And you do that. But what I'm saying, let's all do this together. Let's all do all seven together. Let's grow. Let's expand. Let's keep coming Sunday after Sunday. I want to see you here next week. And I know it's hard to develop new habits. But these habits, if you, as you, when you make a commitment, it's what you're saying. I'm fully devoted, even when it's hard. But I tell you this, if you keep doing what's hard and what's right, before you know what's hard is going to become easy. It's just going to be part of your character. And right now, I know we all want a shortcut and we want it easier. And I want no process and I don't want high commitments. But the truth is, unless you go through that, you're not ready for what God has for you. God's training you for some really great things. And before it gets easier, it gets harder. But that's okay. That's the process. That's how you grow. But don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. This is your year. I'm going to tell you, I love you. God loves you. And I see God every single time I come up here to speak. I don't, I don't have like 10 sermons that are locked in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in some vault and I just bring them out. You know, that's how it works. I pray, I go, God, what's the word? And the word for this year is harvest. But then they go, but what's the word for the first Sunday? He goes, fully committed. Get them fully committed and I will act on their behalf. Get them fully committed and I will help them succeed. Get them fully committed and they will see a harvest of blessing in their lives and their family. I just, I'm waiting for their commitment. I'm ready. So today's your day. I want everybody to stand up and what a great Sunday. Is it cold outside or? No one leave. Be committed to staying here until I release. Right? I'm going to release right now just a second. But because, if, because if you leave right now, you might take the, someone that wants to get saved with you. You know, so this is a really important mo moment, right? Okay. Um, so now, there's two things that are really, really important. Some of us have been Christians for a really long time. But it's kind of been committed, not committed, committed, not committed, and committed, not committed. And, and I'm proud of you that you haven't given up and quit, and quit. But this is what God is saying. This is your time. I'm demanding this of you. I'm ready to do some great things in your life, but I do need your full commitment. So this is a time to recommit our lives to the Lord fully in 2024. I'm going to commit to some simple things. Reading my Bible every day. I'm going to get a growth book and I'm going to read it every day. I'm going to spend some time in the Lord every day. I eat physical food every day. I'm going to eat some spiritual food every day. I'm going to show up to impartation services. This is a, we only have two major huge events a year and this is one of them. And I'm going to be here and I'm going to receive everything God has for me. I'm going to do what I've never done to get results I've never gotten in my life. I'm ready to stretch. I'm ready to push. I'm ready to get uncomfortable so I could start receiving everything God has for me. You know, my friend Rudy, he's, he's, he's sitting over there and, and me, I, I've known him in the car business for um, 20, 30 years that we know, we know each other, probably 30 years. We know each other he was, he was part of my, my team and, and, and last week he ran into the trial of his life. It was a tough one. And then the Holy Spirit told him, God told him, you need to go see Marco. 
And I haven't seen Rudy for at least 10 years. And, and it was like 20 years. We only saw ourselves like twice. But God brought him here on, on Friday. And he came Friday. He came Friday and, and he cried, gave his life to the Lord, just surrendering everything. And, and, and he, so, he told me this. He told me this, which is really cool what he told me right now while I was sitting there. He goes, Marco, I want to let you know, I'm not just coming here today. I'm with you for the rest of your life. See, so, see, that's the kind of commitment it's going to take to start getting the results that you've always wanted. Come on, let's give God some praise. God, let's do this. Okay. One, there's some of us need to recommit our lives to the Lord. You, you, just, you just have to get serious. You have the guts to walk away. You have the guts to walk back. And God's proud of you. We're going to have a just big celebration. Hey, Amen, come on. Let's have a celebration, right? Number two, you're in this room. And this is what you don't know. You don't know if you were to die today, you would go to heaven. You don't, you don't know if you're saved. Now, there's a problem we all have. We're all in the same boat. No one's better than nobody. That's why there was a lady in the, in the Bible that was caught in adultery. And some religious people um, tried to, like, stone her in front of Jesus. And, and they brought her in front of Jesus. And then, and then they said, you know the law, their laws in those days, if someone commits adultery, it's a death sentence. And then she goes, and Jesus goes, okay, I, I know that law. I'm with the law. He goes, okay, he without sin cast the first stone. Start throwing. Start throwing. Well, the Bible says all of them just drop all their stones. <laughs> because the idea we're all in the same boat. How are we going to be there judging other people when we have our own sin problems? Come on, I said, we got our issues, right? Work on your side of the fence. Right? So, so. The idea is the wage, the, sin, has a, sin has a price, has a price. And these are the four prices of sin. One of them is when you sin, the wage of sin is death. And death means this. This is what it means. It means misery. It starts affecting your, your emotions. You start getting depressed. Um, emotions, anxiety, start, all that stuff starts taking over your emotions. And you start losing your joy, your peace, your own, even your own personality. Misery. Number two, Addiction. You cannot give yourself to any sin without be becoming a bad habit. It takes over. And that's why you say, well, 2024, I'm going I'm to get rid of this thing. Um, but the problem is you can't get rid of it without God's help. Who the son, who the, Jesus, without Jesus' help. Who the son says free is free indeed. God's the only one that can change your character and give you a new nature, new ability. His spirit will come in you and give you new life. So second problem is addiction. Third problem is cycles of ruin. You start ruining everything that you touch. And this is what happens. The deeper we get into sin, the more we medicate, the more bad decisions we make. Uh, and we're just thinking, if I just leave here or I leave him, I go do this, I go do that, it'll fix it. It's not going to fix you. The problem isn't outside. The problem is not San Bernardino. The problem is not your hood. The problem is you. You got a sin problem. And you're in a cycle of ruin. You're ruining everything. And the th fourth thing is eternal separation from God in hell. This is a judgment of sin. Now, when we say, are you saved, this is what we're saved from, these four things. And if you don't give your life to Jesus, these four things are going to hover over your head. You're going to walk out of this room in the same condition, deceiving yourself that this year, not, not, not today, not maybe tomorrow, one of these days. Today's the day to give your heart to the Lord. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. This is your moment. Be, come on. It takes a real man or a woman to say, okay, I'm done. I'm giving my life to Jesus. Now, when you give your life to Jesus, he'll forgive you of your sins. He'll set you free. His spirit will come and live inside you. It's called being born again. It'll make you a brand new person. And they'll forgive you and set you free from all judgment. Why? Because he died for you. He suffered. That means we did the crime. We did the sin. And Jesus came in innocent. Didn't commit any sins. He goes, I'll take all their punishment so they don't have to be punished. Come on, there's a God that loves you. He's for you. This is good news. Come on, give your life to Jesus. Tried everything else. One. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. This is commitment. Come on, someone say fully committed. Somebody needs to recommit their lives to the Lord and someone needs to give their lives to Jesus. No one accidentally is going to be in heaven. No one's going to be saved by accident. It's a choice. I give my life to Jesus. One, when I say three, raise your hands. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be fully committed. I'm, I'm ready to come back home. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. That's me. I see all the, come on, it takes real men, takes real women to do this. Proud of you, proud of you. Come on. Hey, come on. I'm proud of you, proud of you, proud of you. Come on. This is not joining a religion. You're joining yourself to the one that created you. Come on. He goes, I love you. I'm telling you, come to me. Commit yourself to me. I'll help you. Proud of you. All the way in the back. Church, 
This is going to be proud of you guys. This is going to be the year of harvest. People that you never thought were going to get saved, they're going to get saved this year. Get that faith up. Okay, those that raise their hands, I want you to do me one more big favor. This is you leaving your old life in those seats and starting a new life. I've learned this, commit without action is not commitment. I want you to leave your seat and come up. I'm just going to pray with you. That's all that's going to happen. There's no speeches or nothing. But I want to pray with you. Would you give them the honor and privilege to pray with you? If you raise your hand, just come up here real quick. We're just going to pray with you. You're going to come up here. We're going to pray and we're going to dismiss. Come on. If you ask your neighbor, you want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. I know it's hard. Sometimes that's the hardest 10 steps you'll ever take. But I guarantee you this. If you make a commitment to take a step, you're moving in the right direction. You're leaving your addiction in those seats. You're leaving your past in those seats. You're leaving your whole life in those seats. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, church. Let, come on, we, can, we should never take souls for granted. Come on, we're a church that celebrates when people come to Jesus. Come on, altars are packed. But this morning, it was the same thing, packed. Leaders, we need like 100, 150 leaders up here. We need 150 leaders. Come over here. We're going to love everybody. Pray for everybody. Come on. They're still coming. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand. They're still coming. Hallelujah. Wednesday night, we're going to have service too. They're still coming. Wednesday night, do more than you've ever done to get results like you've never gotten. Come on, used to party all weekend, go on runs, crazy runs. Come on, run for Jesus. Come on, party for Jesus. Are you here Monday? Are you here Sunday? I'm here Wednesday. Pam's going to say, what? What's going on? I said, I gave my life to Jesus. I'm fully committed. Oh, man. You sure that ain't no cult? They didn't tell you that when you are crazy. They didn't tell you that when you were partying. They didn't tell you that when you were doing stuff that you never thought you would do. But it's funny. You start serving God, and all of a sudden, they're trying to be concerned about you becoming too spiritual. Come on, give yourself totally. I'm all in. Love you. Love you. Another one of my brothers in the car business right here. Come on, give God some praise. So good. You know what's happening? Seeds that I planted 30 years ago are coming right now because this is the year of the harvest. And see, and God's not recruiting you to sit down in a church. He's recruiting you to, to love him, be in a relationship, and fulfill great purpose. This is not a church that's going to make you feel comfortable. We're going to stretch you into your purpose. Come on, you ready? Come on. We have enough entertainment in the last 20 decades. It's time to start getting busy and go to war for our families, for our neighborhoods. The problem isn't, come on, you're blaming society. Come on, we got to shine some light in this darkness. And God is calling you out of darkness to go back in there and save some people. Amen? Y'all ready? All right, we're going to pray. Prayer is simple. We're just talking to God. And you know, I have, I have a grandchild. She's he. She, I have five girls, so it's easy for me to say she, but he is three. And some of the stuff he says, I don't understand what he's saying. And, I, and he gets frustrated when I don't understand what he's saying, so I just act like, ah. <laughs> right? But it don't matter. I want to know what he's saying because I want to help him. And I'm, I'll tell you this. You just say, Jesus. He goes, I understand all the pain. I understand all the hurt. God understands and he's willing to help you. It, it don't matter how much words you say. Just give your heart to the Lord today, okay? We're going to pray. You're going to be forgiven. You're not an accident. I'm so, so, so proud of you. We're going to do this. Stop listening to the devil that tells you you can't do it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And this is what I'm telling you. Give us a year of your life. Be committed this year, 2024. Be committed. Give us a year. Keep showing up every Sunday. Show up on Wednesday nights. Show up to our classes. I guarantee you, your life will never be the same again. And if you mess up, fess up and get up. If you mess up, fess up and get up. You know what I mean? Don't stay down. Everybody mess up. Get back up. Falling down is not the failure. Staying down is the failure. All right? So, I mean, we all mess up. Just get back up. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes, and I'm going to pray with you, and you're just going to repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for bringing me here today. 
to hear your word. You're asking for a full commitment. And today, I make a decision. I am determined to be fully committed to you for the rest of my life. Forgive me of my sins. Set me free from all addictions, all demons. Make me new. Depression, go now. Addiction, leave me now. Thoughts of suicide, go. Today, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Make me a new person. I receive the free gift of eternal life. I am saved. I am forgiven. I'm a new person. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Stay right here. I want to make sure we get your information. Help you with Holy Warriors. That's going to be the, the, this Tuesday and next Sunday. Um, you want to join those classes. Um, make sure Wednesday night we're going to be here. We're going to continue our 21-day fast. If you've not started fasting and you're not sure about it, just ask the person in front of you. They'll help you. I'm proud of every single one of you who made a decision to fully surrender your life to the Lord. God bless. Have a great, great Sunday afternoon. Enjoy yourself. If you need a book, get your book.